When early explorers to Yellowstone spoke of its wonders, they were met with the same response, preposterous. No one could believe the tales of boiling mud and steaming rivers, water volcanoes gushing into the sky, trees that had turned to stone, the mountain of glass and yellow rock. Almost three quarters of a century later, when an 1870 expedition proved that such an astonishing place truly existed, a movement to preserve Yellowstone began. And no one was more fervent in his efforts than naturalist Ferdinand Vanderveer Hayden, who declared, vandals are now waiting to enter into this wonderland who will, in a single season, despoil beyond recovery these remarkable curiosities which have required all the cunning skill of nature thousands of years to prepare. In 1872, Ulysses S. Grant made Yellowstone our nation's and the world's first national park. Federal appropriations covered basic operations, but as annual visitation soared, with millions enjoying the park each year, more funding was needed. Finally, in 1996, the Yellowstone Park Foundation was created as Yellowstone's official fundraising partner. The great thing that the foundation does for us is they provide not the day-to-day -day needs of Yellowstone National Park, but they provide for the margin of excellence. Without the Yellowstone Park Foundation, we would not have the opportunities we have today. We would not have educational and interpretive programs. We would not have some of the, the projects we've done to preserve the history of Yellowstone National Park. The wolf restoration program would not be as vibrant. People would not be able to see one of the great predators in its natural condition. There's a lot of misinformation out there about the impact that wolves have on prey species. And through long-term ecological studies uh, supported by the Park Foundation, uh, through Yellowstone research, we're able to uh, provide new information to, to understand truly uh, the dynamic relationship between elk and wolves, bison and wolves, and the other prey species that uh, they interact with. The foundation also helps conservation efforts for peregrine falcons, trumpeter swans, at-risk bats, which are crucial to Yellowstone's ecosystem, and bison, which have returned from the very brink of extinction from fewer than 15 to thousands today, making Yellowstone bison one of the world's greatest wildlife conservation successes. Yellowstone bison represent a great conservation success story. We're able to conserve more bison and actually manage the disease or actually reduce infection. Without the funding, some of the projects that we do would not be possible. The park's native fish are under threat as well, and the fisheries fund of the foundation allows Yellowstone to work with partners to preserve its fish, including its unique cutthroat trout, for which Yellowstone is its only natural home. Over the next couple of years, we're going to develop a very robust population of West Slope cutthroat trout that we will then be able to get eggs and gametes from and reintroduce this fish, this species, back into watersheds where they once were. Yellowstone's pristine waters continue to face emerging crises, including a potentially lethal fish parasite that have required the full attention of most of the park's aquatic staff. As a result, a large number of fisheries were being left unattended. To make up for this gap, a volunteer program was needed. The Yellowstone Park Foundation has funded the Fly Fishing Volunteers Program, which brings in 70 to 80 people from across the country each summer to the park, where they are taken out to waters where we need information as a fisheries program. For us as biologists, the fly fishing volunteer program has resulted in uh, a, a database of information that we otherwise would not have had. If the foundation were to go away, essentially all the work 
especially geared towards small streams, small lakes, restoration of native fish in remote places would stop. It really would. Of all the wonders of Yellowstone, its most iconic is geysers. There are more geysers and hot springs in Yellowstone than in the rest of the world combined. Yet most visitors used to leave the park without a basic understanding of the rare and precious geysers they saw or the volcanic activity that was happening beneath their feet. The Old Faithful Visitor Education Center opened to the public August 25th, 2010 to more than 10,000 visitors. Elegant building that we can thank the Yellowstone Park Foundation for. Visitors come to enjoy the state-of-the-art interactive fun exhibits and they enjoy the theater which is a beautiful theater that holds more than 200 visitors 25,000 people a day come to see old faithful every day in july and august and numbers close to that in june and september and they didn't know why they came to see uh dynamic geology an, an incredible beauty which is old faithful uh, geyser erupting but they didn't understand why it was here and how significant that is and that yellowstone because of old faithful and many other thermal features is the first national park anywhere in the world Rangers are as much a part of Yellowstone as Old Faithful itself, and they need everything from boats for patrolling its expansive lakes to mules and horses for patrolling and hauling supplies to the park's extensive backcountry. The foundation makes sure they have what they need to do their jobs, including raising the funds for the desperately needed Stevens Creek Barn. Completed in 2011, it provides shelter from temperatures that can reach 30 below zero, so rangers can comfortably care for the park's 100 working horses and mules, along with space for rider training and proper storage for grain and tack. The horses are a big part of Yellowstone. They uh, do all the backcountry patrol. It'd be hard to get a lot of that stuff done without them. Because of the Yellowstone Park Foundation, we're shooing inside. We're able to take care of our animals better. There's something else that the foundation helps care for. Yellowstone's priceless history. For the Yellowstone Archive, the foundation paid for the safekeeping and proper display of precious artifacts, such as original artwork and journals, maps, prehistoric tools, and early photography. At the Yellowstone Heritage and Research Center, which houses these national treasures, visitors and scholars can learn about the exploration of the American West, the history of American science, the birth of the conservation movement, the national park idea, and the government's role and stewardship of our public lands. And the foundation is helping the park continually unearth history through archaeological surveys. The foundation has funded a number of archaeological surveys in the park, um, including many along the Yellowstone Lake shore. And um, three of the points here are some of the earliest uh, that are found in the park. The one on the left is a Clovis point that dates to about 12,000 years ago. So we know that there was human habitat, at le or at least humans traveling through the park for at least 12,000 years. Education has always been a prime focus at Yellowstone, and the foundation helps support everything from a summer youth conservation corps to a junior ranger program for its younger children. One of our youth programs is called Expedition Yellowstone, and it's where students come with their class and their teachers and chaperones to Yellowstone for four or five days. And just getting them out into the Mammoth Hot Springs area or down at Norris Geyser Basin or out at Lamar Valley, they are just so excited to be here. The Park Foundation has assisted us with providing scholarships for um, underserved students, being able to make sure that all students from our class can get here to Yellowstone to participate with their friends and their classmates. While much has already been accomplished by the foundation, we need your help to continue the groundbreaking research. 
to continue education that has made Yellowstone the premier outdoor classroom and to help us ensure that this vast area, which spans more than 2.2 million acres and is larger than the combined states of Delaware and Rhode Island, remains unspoiled and intact for new generations of visitors, students, and perhaps most important of all, future stewards of one of nature's most magnificent wonders. What I love most about working with the Yellowstone Park Foundation is that every time I interact with foundation uh, board members, donors, corporate donors, individual donors, staff, everyone's always so grateful to us for working in Yellowstone. But I feel the other way. I feel like saying thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you a million times because of all that the foundation has given us. I will always be grateful. Yellowstone's America's national park. It's not only the world's first national park, it's also a beacon to the world for, for what conservation, what preservation uh, can be. Without the help of the Yellowstone Park Foundation, we wouldn't be where we are today. Find out how you can help at YPF.org.